It's Matt Roush. And Mike Brennan. <clears throat> I'm actually in my office in Southfield today. Uh, Mike, you're at your home office as usual. And we have with us today a couple of uh, uh, people who are, you know, no strangers to this podcast and to our audience here are two security uh, experts, Dan Lorman and Richard Steenen. Um, who are going to talk to us about the latest and greatest in uh, what's happening in the world of cybersecurity and how to keep yourself, your information, and your business safe. Yeah, and I decided to expand it to a half an hour because last week, uh, I, and I kept sending all these emails to these guys saying, did you write about this? Did you write about it? It was just coming fast <laughs> and furious, you know, so... And I said, we're not going to be able to cover this in 13 minutes. So we're going to be on uh, this segment for a half an hour. And then we have Fred scare you for the second half hour. So, you know, make sure you have your beer handy. Uh, so Solar Winds has made a return. I was amazed. I thought we had that dealt with, but it's back, right? Oh, yeah. And it'll be with us for a long, long time. Because the, the one thing we haven't started to hear yet is, you know, the the repercussions of these various government agencies and commercial entities, you know, basically being breached, right? So that's the next wave that's going to come is, you know, the types of data that was stolen. Uh, if it's a commercial entity, they have to disclose that. Uh, government agencies eventually have to disclose it unless they slap the secrecy thing on it. Um, but in the meantime, uh, according to Reuters, they found evidence of Chinese hackers using the solar winds exploit. <clears throat> so well, you they think stole of, all of our military stuff already. What's left, right? Yeah. You know, so <laughs> well if you think if you think about it, solar winds, Dan can talk to this, you know, supposedly impacted 18,000 of solar winds customers when they downloaded an update that contained a malicious backdoor. Um, and obviously the biggest hacking team in the world, even if it is uh, you know, Russian SRV can't manage attacking 18,000 companies and taking advantage of that. So evidently, China said, hey, we'll, we'll eat your scraps. Deal us in, right? Yeah. You know, so It's crazy. I tell you, Mike, um, I, I went back out and, and this morning just reviewing what the SolarWinds website says. And, and the way they describe their product is one platform to rule your IT stack. And it's like, so it kind of reminds me of Lord of the Rings, you know, one ring to rule them all, right? I mean, it, it's, and so it's interesting for those who aren't following this that much every day, it really covers the full gamut of network management, you know, everything from configuration management, patch management, um, basically all, you know, they call it one pane of glass, which some people may, some people may argue with, but the reality is it impacts, you know, the cu customers using the Orion platform it was every area of their business. And so the, as, as, as Richard mentioned, you know, what are the other back doors that are out there? Even if you assuming you patched that one vulnerability now, um, what other, you know, as you said, shoes will drop over the coming days and weeks and months and probably years. So it's, it's the scope of this is just unbelievable. And, and it's, some people have called it the worst hack, the worst breach in the history of the internet. I mean, I'm not sure if it's that or not, but, Time will tell, but it's certainly up there. Yeah. Of course, the history of the Internet, as we know, it is only about 25 years. But, uh, you know, but certainly uh, who would have thought back in 1994 when Mark Andreessen came out with the first browser, as it were, that we'd be where we are today, where the Internet is so hooked into everything that we do. I did. Did you write about that, Richard? <laughs> Yeah, I did. And back then, it was actually 93 when uh, Mark came out with the beta version of Netscape. I reached out to him and asked him if I could um, use it while I was launching my ISP. And it was down at Cobalt Hall uh, oh. where I launched the ISP. And I had a connection and they had Netscape. And uh, his response was, yeah, sure, have fun. Um, and then he, and then, but that was the first time Cobalt Hall ever had an ISDN internet connection in it. Oh. was for that launch oh. and i remember telling a group of uh, manufacturers reps that in the future the automotive industry instead of having all these manufacturers reps selling to buyers uh, at the auto companies there would just be an online um, marketplace and they could just automatically order everything they wanted over the internet so i created a, a rustnet in order to accomplish that 
And obviously we're not even, we're not there yet, frankly, there's still buyers and sellers. Um, they don't rely on automated systems for that yet. Probably a good thing in light of where we are, but. Well, that was, uh, that was the original uh, aim of Co what became Covicent, right? Exactly. Industry. Yeah, exactly. Covicent. Oh, yeah, I forgot to do that. about them. Yeah. And then that turned it into a federated identity system. And now it belongs to a company called OpenText. Hmm. Who also Amazing. bought Webroot, where I used to work. Yeah, I almost forgotten about that. That would have been in the, in the first decade of this century, right? Uh, somewhere on aught five, aught four, it seems like when yeah. that was, you know. When the acquisition happened, right? Right, yeah. So interesting. Well, also last week, uh, we had reports of ransomware attacks. Just And then this oh. morning, I saw one that I sent you guys. I think I sent it to you. What was like the mother of all hacks, the, the repository for all the stuff that was all hidden away from hack, and now that's been hacked. It's just, wow, you know. Just keeps yeah, going. That's, think, go ahead, Richard. I'm just saying that's why we like to be in this business. It's never, <laughs> <laughs> never going to get off the front page, that's for sure. I, I think the numbers are just astounding, Mike. You know, when you, you look at a lot of the surveys and, and the data is coming in from 2020, um, to talking about a 100% increase from 2019. And back in 2019, I call that the year that ransomware hit state and local governments. I mean, that was that was the big year up to that point where we had all these cities, you know, Philadelphia and Baltimore, and so many people were hacked. Um, and, you know, Atlanta and, and cities in Florida, Texas, it was, a, it was a really major year. And it wasn't just money. It was also shutting down the ability for cities to, at that time, um, conduct business, you know, they, they couldn't, they couldn't close, well, people couldn't close on houses, you know, there's all kinds of different businesses that, that really couldn't run because, you know, like Baltimore had been hacked and things. So it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. And, and more recently, as you mentioned, we had one where a company was hit in England. Um, they didn't really patch, you know, they, they paid the ransom right. and, and then they came back two weeks later and they, and they did it again because right. they hadn't, they, you know, they didn't learn their lesson during those couple weeks and they had to pay the ransom twice. And so uh, I know we, we discussed maybe talking about some of the things people need to be doing, but certainly one of them right out of the gate is, is backing your things up and testing those backups. And, and I think that's, you know, a basic premise that, and it, people, you know, listening to this, your home PC happens to, well, I got a backup from 10 years ago, you know, five years ago, 10 months ago. I mean, you really need to be doing that regularly, hopefully more than, you know, maybe even monthly or, or more often. So, um, but businesses especially, and they need to be air gapped. They can't be just cloud um, access backups because many times those are not, uh, those are access when the hackers get in, they get access to your system. They see where you're backing things up. They go in and they encrypt those as well. Yeah. Well, well it by, was air gap, by air gap, that means for the, for the non-initiated, that means not connected to the internet in any way, shape or form that you have a, a backup that's separate. So that if you do get a ransomware lockout, you can tell them where to stuff it. Right. Yep. Uh, that that helps certainly, Matt. I mean, I, I have a <laughs> a USB drive that uh, that you can use. You know, a fifty gig drive. These, these are not that expensive. On sale at your local, you know, go to Amazon.com. But you can you can get them at Staples. You can get them anywhere on sale yeah. for under ten bucks. And and then just you know back up the files. You don't have to necessarily back up the entire operating system. You can if you want. But you know you can reload that right. Uh, but yeah, take all your data files, the, the, the important documents you have on your home PC, your work PC, make sure they're backed up and they're, and they're separate. So, you know, should, God forbid, you know, my, my system get encrypted, I've got all that data, all those files, all that data uh, backed up. And then uh, a rule of life is if anybody in the room says backup, that means you've got to back up that day or else your system will crash anyways, you know, within 24 hours. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, getting back to that one in, in England, uh, so clearly they didn't fix what the problem was. Now, what to, how are these bad guys typically getting in? Is there one universal way or multiple ways? Or are they just really clever or what? There, in my experience, there are multiple ways. But the one that surprised me the most is somebody you know that runs a report on these. And 65% um, since COVID started are getting in through RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol. Mm -hmm. So if you want people to go home and work from home, you just open up RDP in your firewall, people get to their desktop machines, and then they just 
can open a window looking at their desktop machine and work as if they're in the office. Huh. That's extremely dangerous, right? Full of vulnerabilities, reusing uh, passwords to get in, all that stuff. And that's how they're uh, get, primarily getting in. The other way, of course, is a traditional spear phishing, yeah. right? Get you to click on something and that will open the door. The dangerous ones are the ones that spread as soon as they hit the machine, right? They don't just encrypt the one machine, they encrypt every machine and try and find the, the backups as well and encrypt those. Yeah, well, and, and that those. must, I mean, the spear phishing must work because I can't believe how many attempts I get mm -hmm. on my home email accounts. Yeah. Yeah, you know, great. where somebody's somebody's saying, you know, hey, I'm, I'm Comcast. If you don't click on this, we're going to suspend your service. And, and yep. you look at the from field and it's not from anything even remotely close to Comcast. <laughs> right. So you we're can tell it's it's I mean, you can tell it's BS, but it's but, you yep. know, I guess it must work or, or else I wouldn't try it. Right. So right. or a FedEx well, delivery notice. Yeah. Well, lately I've been getting a lot of them where I'm being invoiced by companies I've never heard of for products I have no idea what they're talking about. That's another one too, yeah. Yep. Right. And yep. since you've been chosen for some survey, uh, you've been selected, you know, you will get a, you know, some deal that's too good to be true. Um, or, you know, some of these may be legitimate surveys, but if they're from somebody you never heard of before, you know, and you're clicking on links, be very careful. Um, you know, I don't, I, I just don't fill out surveys, but, but, you know, so many, you know, you'll be entered into this drawing, you will be, and I think, you know, the other thing, people out there in the, in the technology community need to be aware that as they're sending out, they may be legitimate surveys, realize that people on the other end are getting these and they don't know if this is, you know, how was I selected for this survey or how was I, you know, put in the drawing for this free, whatever. Um, and they may delete it. A lot of them do because they they're afraid of ransomware. So it cuts both ways there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> what I don't understand is when people send me links in text messages. You know, pe <laughs> people I know. You know, and they say, "Hey, check out this cool whatever." I go on. I don't click from my phone on anything. That just yeah. not the way I work. Because you know, I know my laptop is protected. It's on my network. I've got all my security in place, but not my phone. It's an Android. It's totally vulnerable I'm not going to click on something thanks yeah speaking of phones the state of michigan last week announced and i posted uh, in my newsletter today that they have an app out for a security app for phones have you guys had a chance to take a look at that yet no i'm not going to install that <laughs> <laughs> actually i have not either so i i'm uh well a lot of other people might i was just gonna you know i was asking if you had a chance to take a look at it what you thought no. of it uh but not huh no not yeah, yet. I, I'll, I'll take a look at it though, Mike. Maybe next time <laughs> we can talk about it. Yeah, there are well, tons that would be of your old stomping grounds there, Dan. You know, absolutely. Yeah. See what you guys a lot did. of good people. It's been it's been a hard year for state governments around the country, and I think you know the numbers of 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 fraud, the fraud, unemployment fraud. Yep. It's mind boggling, and we're talking thirty nine billion dollars. CNBC reported. 39 billion in unemployment fraud in 2020 and that and the pandemic's not over and you got new stimulus coming so i'm sure there'll be more unemployment fraud in 2021 so it, it's it's crazy the, the amount of um the amount of, of of challenges that that state governments are facing now and it's it's kind of scary yeah it's sad well we have a new president now the last time we talked we didn't um uh, do you think that the Biden administration is going to be a lot more aggressive in this area on cybercrime and hacking and dealing with these bad folks out there, nation states, whatnot? I think, you know, even the Trump Department of Justice came down on, on some hackers, um, but but they tended to completely avoid, um, you know, penalizing and, and sequestering and indicting Russians. So they did do that. Um, and here you've got uh, Biden, you know, taking a harder stance with Russia, so there'll be some pushback. Uh, he supposedly mentioned solar winds to Putin when he had his call with him, and uh, certainly his newly appointed um, Secretary of State has had a conversation with his counterpart, the Foreign Minister, um, of about solar winds. So I think there'll be some definite pushback at that level, and it could be, you know, ousting a bunch of people from embassies, closing a few consulates, things like that. And I, I would just add that, you know, Chris DeRussia, we've talked about him before, Mike. You know, he, he was our CISO here in the state of Michigan. I know Chris very well. I think he's a great choice. 
I think they are going to take it very seriously. You're going to hear a lot more, um, obviously, after solo wins and, and some of the you know issues we had with, with the elections, more focus, more, more um, funding, more resources. It is, there's really, I'd love to hear Richard's view on this, but there's really different opinions about how effective they'll, they'll be able to be. Will it fundamentally change the landscape? And, and part of that goes back to, you know, what Richard wrote about a few years back with Stuxnet and is, you know, is kind of the, you know, the horse out of the barn already, if you will, that all these nations all over the world are now getting into the offensive game. Um, you know, there's all, there's a lot of talk about, you know, hacking back, um, different, different terms for that active defense, um, all kinds of different terminology around going after, you know, the, the, the people who are, you know, the criminals who are actually involved in ransomware that we just started talking about you know, a few minutes ago. But, you know, I, the, the, I certainly think you're going to see a lot more focus, a lot more resource, um, more elevation of this um, with the Biden administration. But I also think it's a very, very hard environment. I think Chris has got a very difficult job. So, you know, are they going to be not just perfect, but are they going to be able to withstand the amount of hacking and, and attacks that we're going to be seeing in the next four years. Um, time will tell. I mean, I'd love to say I'm an optimist and they're going to be successful, but, you know, I, I do think it's, it's going to be a really difficult challenge and it's not going to get easier. It's getting harder. I mean, I'd love to hear Richard's thoughts on that, but. Yeah. You know, if you think big picture, the countries that have are tightly bound to each other, their governments don't tend to hack each other openly. Um, you know, I'm sure they're they're still spying on each other a little bit, um, but you wouldn't imagine the UK spy agency doing a solar winds against us, right? Um, and even the the economic bind we have with China has reduced the amount of hacking that China does against us, right? They still do the espionage because um, that's kind of you know, even I've heard Michael Hayden say, you know, good on them. They stole all the data from the Office of Personnel Management. So you kind of look the other way when it's pure espionage. When it's a commercial attack like solar winds, that's a different thing. So the big picture is to get all the all countries working together in such a way that there aren't any rogue countries. And I'm thinking of Iran and, and North Korea, obviously, and then Russia is essentially cut off from the entire world, right? There's not a single thing that Russia has that the United States needs today, right? Europe needs their gas, but that's just about it. So they can act, you know, in their own interests as much as they like. They're working to cut off their internet to further segregate themselves from the rest of the world. Um, and then they can willy nilly just, there's no legal repercussions for uh, attacking anybody. And we've got to work long time, uh, long term to address that, right? So it's one world working together, recognizing their interests, because that's the ultimate defense against somebody doing something bad to you, is that you can cut off all the business relationships you had with them. Anybody who's been in business has learned that contracts are absolutely no good if there isn't a continuing relationship at stake in order to keep enforcing it, right? Because then otherwise the guy with the most money just breaches the contract and says, go ahead, sue me. Um, so it's just kind of the, my realistic view of how the world works is we've got to address the bigger issues at the same time. Well, certainly uh, both of you guys probably have great information that are, it's not public on what the offensive capabilities are for the United States. Uh, do you think those will be beefed up uh, without obviously going into any kind of details, beefed up by the Biden administration so that uh, not that, I mean, I got to believe the United States has incredible capabilities in this area, right? Yeah, all you got to do is look at the budget for the NSA, $10 billion a year. The uh, CIA has a much bigger budget, but it's a black money. So we, it's they don't have to tell us how much the budget is. Um, but the CIA doesn't, you know, doesn't have very many agents in the field. So they must be engaged in cyber attacks as well. Um, and that's giant. Tim, you know, more than $10 billion devoted just to hacking adversaries. That's giant, giant amount of resources available and some extremely good people at doing it. Um, it's even to the point where I, you know, have a nagging feeling that the NSA probably knew and saw the solar winds attack while it was happening, um, but decided that 
you know, they didn't want to burn their sources, right, to reveal to the Russians that they could see what they're doing because they didn't think the risk was that high. That's huh. totally conjecture, but it yeah. wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if it came out that way. I think I agree with you, Richard. You know, we have resources. I think Biden administration has immense capabilities. I do think the U.S. is – is uh, is uh, I hate. I hesitate to say leading the world. I, I you know, one of the leaders in the world. I, I would say this: New York Times came out with a really interesting article um, over the weekend, talking about you know one of the biggest challenges that's gotten us into this mess is kind of hubris from the United States. That you know, you know, we're kind of the kind of the you know, the Alabama, if you will, in football, or <laughs> we're the team that can't lose. You know, along comes Clemson or along comes every, you know. So the, the problem is, is that, you know, while we may be the Alabama, we may be the best, you know, there are a lot of other teams that are vying for that. And there are a lot of, other, you know, you know, on any given Saturday, as we say in college, but in NFL, certainly, uh, you know, in Super Bowl yesterday, nobody thought Tampa Bay would, would win that game. So, I mean, you, you got, my point is, is that, that, that this really good article in New York Times talked about that. And, you know, there's a lot, of the, the surface, the number of countries, the number of, of players, the actors, they're getting better. And there's the numbers are just growing uh, dramatically. So, you know, I do think we're the best. You know, I, I, I agree with Richard. I think, you know, but we got to be careful, you know, humble and hungry, because I'll tell you, you know, a lot of, lot, of, lot of people that are that are really going after this, a lot of nation states and a lot of criminal actors. And the numbers are growing all the time. That was sort of the premise of the book that Richard and I did now, 10 years ago, Richard, Cyber Stiletto, uh, where the very best people were working for the very worst people because that's where all the money was, right? And still is, yep. right? Yeah. We even have seen a couple cases where, you know, consulting companies or security companies, uh, I'm thinking of Dark Matter in particular, which is a UAE based, um, hired former NSA cyber people in order to set up their their espionage facilities for Saudi Arabia and various other countries. Um, so the, the longer we go, the more people there are who are retired from the intelligence agencies who can sell their services for, you know, I've heard a lot of money. It's a lot money. of money. Yeah. yeah. I, is more of this motivated by criminal enterprise just for going for the dough, or is 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 it sort of a balance between conventional espionage, Chinese? If you look at Chinese weapon systems, they all look like United States we weapon systems. What's <laughs> up with that? You know. So I mean, what are you guys seeing out there? Yeah, it's it, you know, take the the world of bad actors in 1980 and just translate it forward and you'll find probably the same distribution of you know spies criminals pedophiles uh, oh, yeah. all the horrible things that we see on the internet just move there and are taking advantage of having a broader spectrum of attack surface and i, I would just add though mike you know one of the things that again there's been so many articles written about solar winds and a lot of really great pieces different some of them opinion pieces some of it you know mixed kind of facts and opinion where we're going next different things but some really good um, perspectives around that we really are um, talking, it, certainly the financial aspect to this, certainly there's, you know, and there's espionage, but the fear of critical infrastructure, the fear that ransomware, kind of bringing those two together, solar winds, but ransomware, that, that, that if critical infrastructure is hacked, that we really could see, you know, you know, the grid go down or, you know, some of these that people have been saying for years and years and years, a cyber 9-11 is coming, a cyber Pearl Harbor is coming. And it's kind of like, ah, come on, you know, the sky is falling. It's, you know, um, basically it's crying wolf. It, it, it's never going to happen. We're not going to see anything like that. But, you know, the fear is that bad actors get, you know, enough access, uh, especially with, you know, capabilities, backdoors from solar winds, other types of, of, of breaches that it's not just about the money. It could very well be an attack on, you know, things that we rely on in our society, critical infrastructure protection. I, I, I still believe that, uh, you know, at some point we're going to see that kind of major hack. I'm not saying the entire internet's going to go down or the entire grid's going to go down, but, you know, I, there are a lot of people smarter than me that are very worried and are predicting that certainly in the next decade, I want to say it's going to be 2021, 
we're going to see that kind of major um, incident that could be, you know, really devastating to society. So time, time, time will tell, you know, I, I it sounds pretty doom and gloom to say that, but um, it's, it's know. supported by the fact that a lot of those people who I know as well actually have started to um, up the amount of cash that they keep on hand. So physical bills, right. And, or you can go all the way to having silver and gold on hand for depending on what level of, you know, breakdown you see coming. But certainly if the pumps stop pumping at the gas station, that's one issue, not so much during COVID. But if the ATMs don't work, how are you going to get your cash to buy your groceries if the, you know, credit card systems are down too? Yeah, it's a mess. So we got about two minutes left. Uh, actually, one, it, it doesn't fall into the cybersecurity space, but an overt thing I was reading about last week is they were talking about the Chinese now have an EMT weapon that they can use to bring down the entire power grid. I don't know whether that's just the Pentagon leaking something like that to increase their budget or, or whether that was legit or not. But I mean, getting back to the idea of what would cripple the United States the most if, if you brought down the power grid, everything's connected to power. Uh, right. And so I guess that would be most people's biggest concern. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think you look at the power outage we experienced part of here in Michigan yeah. in 2002. Is it? Oh, yeah, that it, was long way ago. Uh, it was August 2003, Richard. Okay. I was Thanks. actually at the, I was at the state command center for four days. I, I remember oh, it well. Yeah, so you was, lived uh, and breathed there. Yeah, it was it's funny. It was, it was Colonel at, um, Colonel Etchu, who became the Michigan State Police Director, was actually managing that emergency because John Ort was down in Mexico at the time. So, yeah, it, it was uh, August 03. Cool. Yeah. Colonel Etchu is uh, uh, Dave Etchu's mom, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's in the security industry. <laughs> That's All right. Cool. Well, we got one minute left. This is where we do the shameless plug. So you guys can tell folks how they can reach out to you. Uh, if they want to get more information or work with you, well, let's start with Dan. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, thanks. I'm in, um, on Twitter at gov CSO and uh, I write for government technology magazine, Lorman on cybersecurity, I write for CSO magazine as well. And uh, happy to connect with you on LinkedIn. So reach out Dan Lorman. Um, look forward to talking to people. Okay, Richard. So if you want to know what I know, buy my book, Security Yearbook 2020. <laughs> I put Very good, every, shameless plug. <laughs> everything I know in there is right in there. Great. Oh, yeah, there you well have done. it. And you can get that on Amazon for how much? I don't know what the Amazon prices are that anymore. You can get it at my website for $18. $18, what a value. Okay, Traditional cool. Traditional four-year students love Lawrence Technological University's thriving campus life. But LTU has always met non-traditional students' needs, too. Lawrence Tech offers over 100 degree and certificate programs that can get adult students started or back on track. And most of our classes are conveniently offered evenings at our beautiful Southfield campus or online so you can balance your social, family, and work life even while you power up your career. Lawrence Tech, where blue devils dare.